Hi, Michael. Thank you so much for coming back again. It's always a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Thank you, Carol Ann. It's been a little while, and I know there's a lot of things going on on your, you know, in your channel and in the world and so-called ufology. So perhaps today we get a chance to uh, jump into any and all of the above. Yeah, that would be great. So um, if you folks had the pleasure of um, knowing about Michael and discovering exactly who he is and what he does, uh, just briefly, Michael Horn has over 44 years of experience as a science researcher, and he began his study and research into the world of ufology, UFO contacts, and so and so on, mostly of, of Billy Meyer, and that was back in 1979. So, Michael, just give us a quick rundown for those folks that might not know you or didn't watch some of our other interviews, exactly what your, your mission statement is. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, it started off with simply wanting to investigate research and report on the Billy Meyer UFO contacts, which are singularly authentic contacts ongoing in Switzerland to this day with one man who's now 86, who claims that his contacts started when he was five years of age. We have been able to, along with numerous other independent investigators, scientific experts, etc., conclude that this is singularly authentic. Now, that upsets a lot of people uh, in so-called ufology. It upsets people who uh, are looking for escape and uh, entertainment and what have you. I changed my mission direction just a little bit when I started to find what I called the higher standard of proof. That means that above and beyond the great, the phenomenal UFO photos that Billy Meyer has taken since 1964, unparalleled. You just don't have anything like this anywhere in the world. You, Nobody has it. No experts, no contactees. Um, I found that his scientific and environmental, geopolitical, financial, economic, and uh, medical information was even more important as far as I was concerned, because I had found that in addition to all these magnificent UFO photos, he had published literally thousands of pages of information, and from which, in the English translations alone right now, we have found oh, over 250 specific examples of what I refer to as prophetically accurate information, meaning without a shadow of a doubt, and this is where People can argue all they want about UFO photos, even though they're wrong when they argue against this kind of incredible evidence. You cannot argue against a copyright. That means that when something is published at a specific date and time, even if you will, and that you can verify that in a credible published document, a book, it's online at a known time, that means that the copyright that has been established by and through any of those methods, trumps any argument about, oh, this could not have been published at that time. Meyer has, we're, by the way, we're going to be reissuing four books published no later than the, the late uh, 80s that have 106 of these conversations, contact conversations of Meyer's, in which we have found many, many, as a matter of fact, probably close to 100 of these original uh, corroborations of scientific, prophetically accurate information, they're in published books. That's the end of it. I, I have already run this by a judge who was a skeptic. We prevailed very simply in the conversation because he understood what 99% of people, especially in ufology, which is populated by people who know nothing of significance, and that includes the people who show up in Congress and so-called whistleblowers, etc. 99% of people don't understand that a copyright establishes legally the first date of publication. It doesn't prove that the information copyrighted is accurate. However, the beauty of this situation is, and when we reissue these four books, you're going to see that it is always subsequent, later than, after Billy Meyer has verifiably published this information, 
this body of information, all these examples, that the discoveries are, are made and are called new discoveries or that the foretold events occur. And this is why um, I have a problem with all of so-called ufology, because the people that are out there making the most noise about it know absolutely nothing of significance. And I will challenge, as I have, and of course, none of them want to take it up, any of them and all of them to refute Myers, singularly authentic physical evidence and his verifiably higher standard of proof the copyrights so i've been busy with that since i recognized this in about 1988 um yeah i there's there's so much to ask with with everything that's going on right now in the world of ufology um i remember in one of our conversations and correct me of course if i'm if i'm wrong that you said a lot of this stuff is nonsense, that it's not really, you know, UFOs, that it just could be other technologies or maybe hoaxes perpetrated by the government. Who knows? I, I have a little bit of trouble with that. And so do our um, listeners from um, the last interview that we did, too. Um, some folks think that there's, you know, a plethora of evidence indicating that there is something going on in terms mm -hmm. of validating this, aside from the congressional hearings and all that, um, just eyewitness reports and things. So wh what are these beings, these these crafts that we're seeing up okay. in space, if not the real thing? What in God's name are they? All right. Well, let's break this down just a little bit and explain from the point of view, let's say, of my research and others and from Billy Meyer, what is going on, what has been going on. First of all, for over 100 years, there has been on Earth the pursuit and development of technology of alternative craft. They were first seen over the battlefields of World War uh, I, 1915, and these were not terrestrial craft. These were the first sightings of extraterrestrial craft in the so-called modern age, the 20th century. In the 1920s, the development was already underway in different countries, and it increased quite a bit after World War II because the Nazis had come into possession of information. They developed a more advanced alternative craft, and since then, developments have been made. So let's be clear. There have been throughout history uh, evidences presented of other craft during highly non-technological times, going back hundreds to thousands of years. Those things are not disputed in this case. There's a matter of fact, a lot of evidence in about this that nobody else has any really, <laughs> anything comparable because they can't know, they don't know, they don't have access to Myers sources. Number two, let's just say that people say, well, Billy Meyer can't be the only contactee. My answer is very simple because it talks about other craft. We'll get there. Unless you can prove that means that you have verifiable, independently corroborated, tested and authenticated evidence of what is verifiably of extraterrestrial origin, then please do not clutter up the airwaves, the internet, anything with all of these can't be's and all millions of contacty nonsense things. And all of this is always posted by people who have no credible research backgrounds, none, zero. They've come from whatever they're doing, working in an office, or you could be involved in computer, but zero experience with this. I've done this now for 45 years, and I'm not the only one. The people that have preceded me, there are literally, in terms of the body of investigative evidence, there's something like 200 years at least of independent expert analyses and investigations that have gone on into this material. Now, what's being seen in the skies today? From the 60s to even in this, you know, uh, epoch of the 2000s, the Pleiaran extraterrestrial craft, such as we see in the photograph behind me, have been seen and even photographed by other, there's five other photographers who've taken photographs of these craft, Meyer craft, visit Meyer. These craft were being photographed and Meyer has films on them. We've got all this up. Mm -hmm. 
but they stopped making these appearances in the past couple of years because following up on information they had provided to and was published by Meyer, going back a couple of decades, the other beings who are here observing us, but having bases, at least a couple of these groups have bases underground and have been there a very long time. Those are the craft being seen now. And our government uh, still has rather inferior photographic video evidence or anything like that. Myers' films, photo, and video remain the clearest, clearest evidence, the closest evidence and cl clearest evidence. So what we are seeing now, there is a proliferation of sightings of the other craft from what are known in this material as the Earth foreigners and or future Earth travelers. We can get into it, but for the sake of addressing the question, we do not dispute it. I have a video up from 2015. Billy explains who these people are, where they're based, the numbers of groups and all. So all let me get let me get you right. So these these are other than Polarans, they're 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 extraterrestrial craft. Not necessarily now extraterrestrial, because they, like future future us craft? Future Earth human plus people whose ancestors were extraterrestrial who've been based here literally for several thousand years on below Earth. Not to jump all over the place, but does that explain a lot of the biblical sightings and, um, you know, etchings we see archaeologically, like of, of crafts and things? Does that explain part of that or? Part of it, because some of those things that have been uh, portrayed in artwork over the millennia were craft that were from extraterrestrials who were here above ground and above the earth, but who also had bases even on the earth. They were working in some ways and capacities at times with other so-called primitive civilizations uh, in Egypt and in South and Central America. There's an abundance of this information. We have a, an author who submits information, just posted a new article pertaining to all this on the blog today. I haven't even had time to see it myself. And he correlates his research with Meyer's material. Now, I'm going to simply say, I am not yet so thoroughly familiar with everything he said that I can say conclusively that I understand or would agree that the correlations are all correct in this case. But I think a lot of what he's got from just from cursory reading, he is elaborating on the information Meyer has published about this. So this is this is why when we talk about, just to jump for a second, the hearings in Washington, it's a travesty what's going on in this country. Why, we, why, why are they doing this? Why... It, why the sideshow? Because the not I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. There are conspiracies, and they're not theoretical in terms of Myers' information is written about them long before our theorists discovered the conspiracy or made up stuff around real conspiracies that a lot of people know far less about the, the real end. Here's the deal: this country is not run by the president. This country is not run by the Congress. It's right. run by very powerful people with immense wealth. They operate uh, even through corporations uh, that we know of, such as BlackRock and Vanguard and, and some, you know, large banking systems. Yes, there are very powerful families that go back, you know, a long time. It's not a one world government in that sense. There are many powerful entities vying for power even with each other, and some of them have quite a bit of control on things, such as what is called the deep state in this country, or the dark order, or the shadow government by Meyer. That's a reality that has operated here for a long time, and that is more of what's in control. The concern about UFOs, let's face it, <clears throat> starting with Woodrow Wilson well over 100 years ago, our government at high levels of military and intelligence have known about the presence of other beings in the universe and even to some degree here on above or under the earth or the water but it was never necessary as a matter of fact not desired to start 
presenting this information because basically they would, at, at the times leading up to these times, they would be saying, there are beings here we have absolutely no control over and we don't know what they're... That is a destabilizing admission. It would be a true admission, but it's also an understandably withheld one to a degree in a world where you have governmental, military, media, intelligence, religious, and political right. entities needing control over everybody. Now they found that it's now convenient because they still know that there's not a threat, but they're only partially right. So they pump it up as a threat. Evil aliens. Let's set up a committee. Remember, the committee was set up. There was a committee set up over a year ago and one before that. I called it out a year ago saying this is going to lead to nothing. I, I have a big video on the redacted channel, 225,000 views, whatever. And we're possibly about to need another video like that to go up. I'm going to let you know who I've been in contact with to some degree. <clears throat> now, what's going on is while they the sightings have increased to a level that it's now advantageous for the military, for the intelligence to come forward and talk about this and set up committees that are going to take six months to deal with a potential evil alien threat. The last time any powerful force or entity ever wanted to, um, let's say, attack or threaten a less powerful force, we're just even speaking terrestrially, they didn't give the uh, intended victims six months to set up a committee to find out if it's real. Right. And that's now over a year old. So this is bogus, except, yes, there's another shoe to drop. So now, as Meyer and the player and have warned, the mistake that our government is making, knowing, you know, the Tic Tac video and other things that can represent some of these craft, they're now starting to fire at these things. That's a big mistake. And it's tied into the prophecies in this material about what may come in the relatively near future. So what we have are now our Congress people upset that the CIA won't give them this information and show them more grainy photos and stupid videos. Well, why are you bothering with that when I've already sent Representative Anna Luna, Republican of Florida, Meyer information, Information on the previous covered up in Congress, evidence, photographs, and all. And gee, wouldn't you know it? No response from Rep mm. Representative Luna. They're busy right now trying to figure out why the CIA. So I am about to send something to another representative there. One of the representatives, I'll just tell you because what's the secret? Uh, there's a representative, Tim Burchett, who seems like a fairly reasonable guy and he's mm. sincere, right? Yeah. And it's uh, about a year ago that he put up a tweet, and I might be able to bring that up if I can, or not. But anyhow, uh, it'll be, it's on my blog. There's a tweet where he gave a thumbs up to my tweet about this, the stealth UFO photos that could help prevent World War III. This is the evidence that I discovered in October 2020. Stealth, top secret. We know who was flying it, everything now about that plane. Oops. I'm just showing your website. Okay, let me grab something from the other one, if I may, just for a minute while you show that. And yeah, what I, I just want to show folks, you could go, uh, and of course, I'll have it running across the screen, theyflyblog.com, and there's just a, a ton of information on here, of course, and you can read all about Billy Meyer. and, and click, Meyer. On the, click on the beam ship gallery if you want to, Carolyn. Sure. Joanne, I'm sorry. There you go. And I'll tell you that, just be there you go now slowly so people will see these photos all taken pre-digital to era there's no photoshop they've been independently examined and authenticated by real evidence not online armchair know nothing people who are amusing themselves on the internet or who are making unfounded unsubstantiated skeptical attacks as you go through these are just a smattering of the 617 photos that we now have out of 1200 that Meyer took. And then I'll show you something else if you want to. Um, uh, okay. One of the questions that we had was why the various craft, like, you know, <laughs> why is this one so different than that one? <laughs> sure. Because they do, they have different capabilities. They serve different purposes. 
And for the most part, we are presented with the disc shaped craft because that's historically more familiar to us. You know, if, if we only had, uh, you know, one kind of craft, then people would complain you only have one type of craft. You show more than they question that. And yes, this is a strange looking craft, but it's been authenticated. The nighttime photos you see keep going. And maybe we'll see. Here you go. Right in the center now. You see that greenish, the one that's got uh, right next to the gold one. That's what happens when anybody takes that gold and, and with a black background photo right off the Internet and drops it in Photoshop. You find out that this is a full size object with an energy field hovering over a road with the grass right next to it and a hillside. I mean, I will just tell you, people who are interested in UFOs, unfortunately, because they don't know anything and are just almost uneducatable, are the biggest enemies of getting this truth out, even more than the government. Okay, so we keep scrolling through here. And yes, there's all sorts of photos. People can ask questions and all that. Keep going and we'll see. I think we've got a couple more to show you. What exactly here. is this here? Um, it looks like a laser light weapon, that one. Yes, we, yeah. that is indeed a 600-year-old la laser weapon that actually was also loaned to Meyer. He put holes through trees with it. This is one of the ETs whose face is cut off. She's wearing a gold suit. Now, just for all the skeptics who know absolutely nothing, the investigators, and these are Air Force and independent high-level private security investigators, tried to find that object, not something that looks similar. They tried to find that object that pe people call a toy anywhere in Switzerland or anywhere else in the world. It doesn't exist. That gold suit that you see, Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist either. Nobody could find it. So this is a teaser case. It's meant to make people think. Of course, when you get to the UFO community, that's a pretty, you know, futile thing. So if you maybe scroll up, I think we might have a couple more of the, uh, the other way. The other way? Yeah. I want to see if we put the, any of the stealth photos below. If not, we do have some at the top. Ah, yeah, here. So you see these six photos here? Click on that one. That's a stealth plane. These photographs were taken in 1981. Kodak authenticated. An expert who had worked at Kodak as a Kodak film expert authenticated real photos, no models, no uh, manipulation, no Photoshop, no special effects. The information on the back of the photo shows processed in 1980s by Kodak. These were taken by the lead military investigator. This is unprecedented, and I made it available to the first committee. I've sent it to Representative Luna at the second committee with no response, and I'm about to send it off to Representative Tim Burchett. Now, if now, these people, stealth vehicle uh, airplane is this up here? That's, that is a then top secret U.S. stealth plane piloted by a pilot named Hal Farley. On my site here that you're on, I have an article. For instance, if you go back uh, one page back to the main page, uh, you know, my blog, just hit a back arrow somewhere at the top of this whole thing. There should be a back arrow to the left, maybe, or home, click on home. Okay, yeah, good. Home. Now let's scroll up a little bit to the search bar. Yes, and over to the right, over over oh, to the right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, cl uh, click right in there, stealth, and then click on that, and then I'll show you some one of a number of articles. Okay, now click on show oh. all articles. Good. Yeah, did now, that. Scroll up. Okay, so... Here we go. Um, I'm trying to think which. OK, stop about there. Let me just see the dates. Why don't you click on May 17th? Yeah, that one. And I'll see if that's the right one. I think that's the right one. OK, and slide, as you scroll slowly through it, keep going, you'll see that is the plane right there that we were able to discover actually the work was done by Melissa Osaki, who's my webmaster, and a guy named Matt Knight in the UK. Now, if you scroll down slowly. And that was back in 81? This was taken. This is that June 1981, which is before we ever found this. This is what the, the extraterrestrials told Meyer. 
that this, these photographs were taken on June 18, 1981. I didn't know we had stealth technology back then. That was then top secret until it was then revealed. Right. This was the first one, I believe. Right now, if you keep going, you're going to see that this is a very re well researched document. And keep going. Keep going. You see, she gets into all the details, mm. the differences. And, and also now you, you see another one of our photos. But as you keep going on this, you see another one. That's a great photo. Here's mm -hmm. another one. Right. Yeah. It comes in. The UFO is basically not moving. It just tilts a little. The stealth is moving. And the photo expert said we can detect from the blur. The aircraft moves. The UFO stays stationary. Now you keep going. That's you'll see. You see, it's like that's she was able to correlate the photo above this. She, well, I'm not going to try to explain the, the, the little photo in the inset that looks all modeled mm -hmm. that was taken from Wendell Stevens photographs. Mm -hmm. And it's undoubtedly it's the same plane. This is what we're trying to get our <clears throat> U.S. Congress to acknowledge. And uh, I'll tell you something else in a, a bit. People say, well, why, do, why don't you get this information to Tucker Carlson and blah, blah, blah. Well, really? Try. Try to get to Tucker Carlson. We haven't had any luck. I've had... I've been approached by three independent public relations firms in the last month and a half. It, they find this information. They contact me. They say, wow, we want to get this out for you. Uh, let's get a press release. And I say, oh, okay, sure. I, I write up a thing. They can modify it, whatever. And then the funny thing is they come back and they say, um, uh, uh, er, uh, uh, we're, we're really sorry, but um, we won't be able to, of course you won't be able to publish it. Every media outlet right now, every PR company, every network, every one of these, any major online, any major media, it's all corrupted. It is monitored and controlled through the intelligence services. So let's come back to your question. They don't want it out because A, Myers contacts, which are still going on, still going on, 80 plus years running, it's clear there's no threat. And none of the people ever ask anything about, well, what's the reason? They're all presuming evil alien, a threat, a threat. They're all talking about a threat because that's bottom line. They want more money for more weapons, for more endless dead end. And I mean, dead end this time. Yeah. No, I'm sure, I'm sure the military industrial complex has nefarious reasons for doing what they do. What about the stories of uh, these extraterrestrial crafts that have disabled nuclear weapons? Is that, that a bunch may, of malarkey or not, not necessarily? It, I don't think it was the play on. They were involved in something else when World War Three could have started and a Russian submarine. Uh, it was in motion and had the capacity to launch a nuclear weapon to, towards the U.S. or weapons because uh, radar settings had erroneously indicated weapons coming from the U.S. towards the then USSR. Mm -hmm. Fire and one of the extraterrestrials literally manifested on board that craft and they got to the, the guy, the commander of the craft, who was ever in charge of the launch. And the guy was to say, put it mildly, a little surprised to see a man and woman suddenly show up in his space. And they prevailed upon him to be reasonable and to realize, you know, they wouldn't be there if this was not something super critical. And please, you're not being attacked. And the guy took that leap of trust, if you will, and did not launch or we wouldn't be here. Right, right. But, Some yeah. folks are also, of, of course, asking um well, firstly, have the Plarens ever visited anybody other than Billy Meyer? Yes. And is they, there they, proof they, of that documentation? Well, no, uh, you're not going to find that documentation, at least not for a while. And I'll tell you why. Um, that is the kind of thing that also with some of the people that were visited, they did not know they were meeting with an extraterrestrial person at the time number one is that because and, they look human well yes and because they also did not uh you know identify themselves as as a um 
you know, as extraterrestrial, this has been a very, very, they actually also interacted with a man named Ernst Stuhlinger. Stuhlinger was the right-hand man to Werner von Braun. Mm. And uh, Werner von Braun uh, was a Nazi. He came here. He worked, of course, for our space agency because of the intimate connection between our military uh, intelligence. and Was the that Nazi. the paperclip project? I'm not sure. It may have been. It's familiar, but I don't want to say yes because I don't know. Yeah, when, they, knew, when we brought over all of the uh, yeah, scientists. They well have been with that. Yeah. Uh, the play Aaron, you know, acknowledged that, um, how to put it, Stuhlinger was beamed into a craft with Meyer and I think it was Semyazi at the time, and they read him the riot act about the fake moon landing, and he admitted. Wait, then, so so the moon, according to you or Billy Meyer, the moon landing was fake. The first one was faked. Um, and uh, the other ones were real. As a matter of fact, the other thing is Apollo 13 that supposedly had an accident and crisis had no problems at all. They were on the moon placing the artifacts that would have been put there by Apollo 11 ah. on the moon. And recently, uh, a, an expert who um, does photographic analysis and, and he's spent a lot of time on this material, put out a video and and I'll be able to give you his contact info. You might want to talk to him. Yeah, that'd be great. He puts out a video showing you how it was done photographically, not the common things. Oh, this is just the wrong angle. He analyzed it and he was able, pardon me, to pinpoint how, when and where. I've seen so virus. much footage, Michael, of how fake this was and interviews with folks that worked at NASA saying, oh, we just lost uh, the uh, technology to do it and and you know i mean i've seen okay. endless hours of fake footage and and it breaks my heart to think that we faked that but but i do believe we did so the subsequent landings what were there four i think there were five after apollo 11 I'm yeah not sure. i'm not too sure but i i know there were a few yeah, so they those, worked it out no. they worked it out <laughs> How did yeah. they get through that radar belt, that radiation yeah, belt? Radiation belt of an yeah. belt of I don't know. And uh, I can tell you Crazy. that. Well, here's the thing. Maybe maybe they have sufficient shielding in the craft. I don't know. But I can tell you this, that Meyer is ahead of the curve because he, years before our scientists discovered it, he published articles from the Play Iron Information stating the dangers of even, th this isn't true space travel, this is just enter space the dangers to the astronauts to the brain and yeah. the body it's a, it, we've published this before it's ever discovered oh is that right yes yes i don't yes, know if is. i read that on uh, it's probably in one of his books i'm sure we have it online i must have missed that um i'll have to go check it out i'll have to go check it out we'll make sure you have it so any of the look the skeptics, the people that are post nasty comments are losers in life. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't pay attention to them. Yeah, that, they, they just have nothing better to do and they are right. strange people. The people that try to, to talk as if they only talk as if they know, because what are they doing? They're running around the Internet, getting information from other people. Exactly. Who nothing. Right. So I, this I look at it like this. Point. No matter what you say or do on the on the interwebs. Somebody will always be belligerent, nasty, vile. So I just ignore it. It yeah. means absolutely zero to me. So that's why yeah. even when they leave comments, I, you know, whatever, just whatever. doesn't bother me. This is how self-destructive people are. See, here's right. the kicker. None of these people, not nobody in ufology, nobody in the government really goes, None of the people ever go, well, if there are real contacts ongoing with somebody, what's the reason for them? Because we know the threat narrative is BS. Nobody asks. And it's I, I say to people, the Meyer material is the key to our future survival. Well, what do you mean? What's the reason? The reason is to help us assure our very, very, very threatened future survival. <laughs> and all of these things happening now, the wars, the the terrorism, the things that are coming, the earthquakes, the volcanoes that have and are going to erupt with 100% certainty are, have been forewarned of. 
Okay, I remember a question. Um, somebody had asked if if that's the case that mm -hmm. we're being forewarned and all these prophecies from Billy, and 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 if it's about our own existence, if it's an mm -hmm. existential crisis or something, why doesn't why don't the Polarans make themselves be shown and save us directly rather than do it kind of subvertly? Well, because this isn't religion with pretend gods and saints and saviors. This isn't politics where if you'll elect me, I promise to fix the mistakes of my person. Understand the core of this is about self-responsibility. These people, assuming for a moment that there are people that have actually made and fly in that craft and that they live in a world and that they are miles ahead of us, let's say, Light, light years and millennia ahead of us, mm -hmm. they've gone through their own evolutionary struggle, their wars, their revolution, their atomic crises, their, their culture, whatever. And they know from experience and they know from what happened on Earth when other ETs came millennia ago saying, we are the Lord creators of you and everything else. So they could lord it over us, and they appeared in Egypt and the Middle East, and they appeared to this group 5,000 years ago, and that one, they know that that only creates more chaos. It's not about them. They're not here to save us. They're here to help us save ourselves. But instead of asking those questions, the people who ask those questions online all the time, why don't you dig into the material or pose questions directly or interact or make sure that I get on some channel where you are watching all your make-believe stuff all the time so we can get these warnings out to people so that this place, this country, doesn't actually encounter the fate foretold for a very long time about being utterly destroyed from without and from within. No, you want to chase lights in the sky and worry about a David Grush guy who doesn't know what the hell he's dealing with. These people, a lot of whom have been mildly hypnotized, they, they can know something, but who cares about alien bodies? What good does that do you to babble folks about, well, Lou Elizondo, a disinformation agent of the intelligence Oh, is that right? These people, it's like, I he call them- He seems so sincere. Well, he's probably a nice guy. Yeah. There's a video of him. It's on my blog. There's a video where I, I had put up a video calling him out and calling him a liar and a dishonorable traitor to this country. Yes, indeed. Because he puts up this phony pledge. I will always tell you the truth. I will always help reveal and the I truth. I saw that. So I called him out on him. And I get a video, which I posted. There's a man obviously with a camera, he's on the screen, he doesn't say anything. And in the background, you hear me in one of my videos. And then the guy points, he turns the camera, and Lou Elizondo's in the front seat of the vehicle, they're in a car, and he turns around and he smiles and gives me a thumbs up. Kind of like, well, you can't do anything about it, can you? So, okay. You know, it's like, we try to get a, and <clears throat> for the longest time, it drove me crazy trying to do this and get people listen, but I understand this at this point. The major shows that you know want to cover UFOs and all the people now, suddenly all these hosts, they think of themselves as great celebrities because they've just discovered sliced bread and they bring on the latest know-nothing expert who can... There are thousands of people around the world. You right now, from your own research, you know more about this than these congressional clowns than any of the phonies on all these stations. And if I sound like I'm a little nasty about it, well, think about people, think about yourself and your families. When this coming, this cashless thing that's coming, that yeah. Billy, I put up information, 2006, video visit with Billy. You may as well roll cigarettes with your paper money. This is what's coming, yeah, folks. I mean, this, you know, unfortunately, we're headed towards China 2.0 here, so... It'll be worse. Yeah, probably. It, what, what What is coming here ultimately is the dispossession, dispossessed people of the American public and the government who's ever going to be sitting in that office at that time, whether it's Gavin Newsom or whoever on the other side, we don't know whoever, 
ultimately, the military and the police will be turned against us, you, me. You, we will be dispossessed if these prophecies are correct. And so far, they haven't made any mistakes. And why are these prophecies and predictions error-free? Because people refuse to listen in time and do anything except follow idiocy. You, you're you pathetic. You, you, if I'm a UAP researcher, no, you're not. You work in a warehouse and at night you come home, you get a six pack, you go online. And like other people, you go, you start looking at the stuff, but then you think you're doing something with your four minutes of research. Sorry, I don't care any longer. We've tried. We know we're obstructed. We're suppressed. Don't, hey, folks out there in those offices with those three letters, you don't have to worry about shooting me. You know, they've shot at Meyer now 25 times. He's survived all this stuff. I've interviewed for eyewitnesses to 14 of these events, maybe 15 actually. So we're no threat to them because what's the chance that any of these people in Congress are going to dare to show the American people real yeah. evidence and then get into the information? Here's the science. Here's information about every planet in our solar system published before our scientists knew it. Here's information about volcanoes and earthquakes that all occurred before we were warned, but published years and decades before. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't worry about the two coming civil wars that Billy Meyer foretold in 1981 and 87 and recently more information. No, don't worry. I laughed about it, frankly, in 86 when I read it. Who's laughing now about the polarization going on in this country? So I'm all little, of the poor people. I, about yeah, one thing. Go um, ahead. I'm are sorry. the parents from our future? No, they are. They live in their own time space, but they interact, you know, with Meyer in in a here and now time. They, they can and do travel in time and space. Meyer is verifiably a time traveler. He's at least two to three times older by virtue of the actual years spent not just in this time frame, but in travels with them. And yes, I can prove it in 15 minutes in a court of law. But what do you folks care? You want to listen to David Grush or or, or who is it? The Stephen Greer, the huckster and all yeah. these people. But you, you know, you can't, you can't fault people too much because we're, we're largely sheep. We We follow the shiny things. So, you know, they're making this UFOlogy stuff very shiny right now. Everybody is, look at what's happening in Peru, too, with these aliens that attacked. I mean, I watched that whole documentary, too, about, you know, if that was legit. They're supposedly on some kind of plaque and they levitate off the ground and their face blurs. Did you hear about that? Go to my blog, if you would. This is worth bringing up. And in the search bar, just write, the oh. number seven with a little, you know, half quote that means seven feet. And I think you'll be interested in this. And this is ironclad, ladies and gentlemen. What would you say? Put in a seven? Seven in the search. And then a little foot symbol, you know, the soon, the one little quote, not a full quote. The seven with a little thing above as if you were quoting it. Oh, yeah. I- just make sure it's just the one, not a... There we go. Okay, and search. And then let's see what it says. Uh, keep going to... There it is. Seven foot giants right up there. Second one from the top. Click on that. And then I'm going to take you into this. And when I tell you that Meyer is a time traveler, I'm not joking with you people. So let's go down just a little bit. Nine, uh, stop there. Stop there. Ooh, go back up a little bit. Right there. Now, see that? 1976 Peru jungle. Oh, my gosh. 1976, Carol Ann. And I have also a copy of that. It's in the something called the Prophetian. Yes, seven foot. In Now, if you read more. Quakes and blazes, America and its islands are to be named. There was major earthquakes after that Peru sighting. And what American island was ablaze after this stuff was announced? This here is exactly, you know, this here 
Yes. Is, but I mean, they're calling themselves face. I don't know the the word in in Peruvian, but something with face peelers, like they peel the face off of. They I wouldn't worry too much about that stuff. I am. I think what the main thing who is here, responsible for this, Michael. Who me? is doing this stuff? There are these giant peoples. This is this tells you about it right here a bit. They live underground in Peru. They retreated underground some time ago. They're very tall. And I think they're reddish skin or reddish hair or something. What I can't read it from here, but the um they it it tells you they're going to come out and start attacking people. And it's just what happened. It may or may not be over. And whatever the thing about whether they're ripping people's faces off or whatever. I don't know, but I can just tell you that here you go again, somewhere in Peru, according to attack the village. Look, if if people don't get it by now, they are sheep and they are stupid. And I have no compassion for that. Wow. We've done this for Billy Meyer has been publishing information literally since he was 10 years old. He's 86 in Earth present time years now. We've been at it since I started presenting in 1987. I started my research in 79. I own these documents. Nobody's going to tell me that, oh, he backdated it like morons. This is, we've got to get down to, to, to brass tacks here. Are you people this stupid that when you're also fascinated with evil alien, you can't take a look at the real thing? In which case, if that's the case, those people who just don't want to know, that's fine. Don't know. You can just let's, say. Let's, let's, let's posit this question because I, I really want to put this to bed too. Sure. Um, this flatter thing. So, you know. <laughs> there's so many things to say. You know, so there's, I, I just came upon something the other day. There was, there's new uh, videos online and I didn't get a chance to look at all of them. They have some kind of special cameras they put up to show the earth in a whole new way. And I, I don't know if they were showing any other plants. In order, at the very basis, in order for the flat earth theory to be true, and of course, forget about the obvious things about water running off the edge and never finding the edges and all the crazy justifications. Firmament and the whole... That means that every object in our solar system, every planet in our solar system is what? It's also a flat disk facing us. You're trying to get us to believe that we, see, it's so crazy egocentric. We yeah. are the center of the universe and everything is you know, out there for us. So all these things, they're not round, they're flat. Like we, you have to be brain dead, folks to fall into that. And frankly, it's not worth arguing. Lots of people that make it sound really possible. It's the same thing. You get people who concoct these theories and try to come up with pseudoscientific explanations. It means that every photograph taken by any country from above the earth showing curvature, showing clearly curvature, you oh, don't see- fish eye lens, they say. It's what? Fish eye lens. Nonsense. You never see another country over there. You never see another continent. You always see the, the curve. Just, oh, it's a fish out of that. It, you have to just go, okay, you you know, don't, don't drive. Don't get around any heavy machinery and certainly don't play with sharp objects because you're right. a dummy. And that's it. I don't care. You want to waste your time, folks, with flat earth? Please, at least you'll do something and you won't get in the way of people who learn how to think. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. One of the other things, and we we talked about this before, but it came up a few times. Um, since Billy was inside these these craft mm -hmm. again, and I know you're probably sick to, of explaining <laughs> it. <laughs> Why don't they have photographs? Go ahead. Right. Let's just give it one more one more go around because. There are people saying, you know, like, why didn't he at least take one photo of the inside? Or how come they never let you photograph the actual Clarence? Like, okay. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. In, in our, uh, I don't know if I have it in my little thing here, but Meyer took two or three. I do. This photograph is taken. I get my big head out of the way here. Oh, I don't know how to do it. We okay. Can there you go. See that? 
There's two craft. He's taking this photo from inside a craft with two craft out there. Now, how about one that's a little clearer? And why not? Oops, I got to find it first. Here it is. There it is. Now, this is above Switzerland. Billy Meyer is in a craft and down. Oh, I'm doing it again. I see it. Yeah. Okay, down there. We've got another UFO there. Right. Okay, 1975 or 76. That's the answer right there. Because you people can't understand what you're looking at, you can't understand it. You don't even care. You just want to chase lights in the sky and nonsense. Because you can't understand, you want to make further demands. Well, why not this? Here's another one taken from outside, from inside a craft, I believe. Yeah, right there. Up screen right, right below the two of the stealth photos, tilted at an angle. Here and lower left, this one was either taken from a hillside with a two craft or from within a craft. But you can't educate people who can't be educated, who don't have the desire to think. So right. people can, I don't care. You're a skeptic. Good. Here's the thing. They, this photo, you know, you showed, uh, we, we looked a little at one of these things here. But this is sitting in front of his front yard and somebody tried to duplicate it. They did a nice job, but it didn't work because they also can't duplicate this, these details. And Mr. Billy Meyer in 1981, living in the boonies in Switzerland, isn't machining and getting crystals from who knows where. These beautiful crystals, a hundred of them set around the rim of this craft. The photos, folks, you can argue about photos all you want. That's why I said it's the information. It's the evidence in his in his books and in his documents that he's published before our brilliant scientists ever discover it. Mm. I've confronted scientists, some who've hung up, literally. They can't handle it. You've got a guy named Avi Loeb at Harvard. I found artifacts. Of, and now you, who knows what you found? But you're a, a you know you're a big self promoter, and you get a PhD at Harvard. So suddenly you think you're an expert. I've offered this guy several times. Once got him on the phone. Even guy mm -hmm. doesn't want to talk because maybe he found out what happened when I had this guy Robin Hansen, this so called scientist, on who babbled for about. 20 minutes about all that he knew about ETs. And then I started showing him the Meyer material and it goes like this. He starts going, um, uh, well, uh, and he's, you know, having an apoplectic seizure. Why? Because these people see our, our worship in this country, our, our God for even for the non-religious is money and fame and getting your face out there and, and your useless, no nothing personality put in front of people so that you can suck up bandwidth when there are people who are saying, we'd like to help prevent the destruction of our country, a third world war, the devastation that's coming from certain things, warning people in certain locations. But no, they want to stick their stupid internet faces up there. And, you know, nobody wants to hear me carry on about this. I don't want to hear me carry on about it. But what do you do? 40 Five years, and there are other people, you know, been at it as long. They may not be as vocal. To my, my next question, um, yeah. quite a few nice comments, too, commending you for your hard work, Michael, and mm -hmm. that's always nice to read. Um, what drives you every day to keep doing this on a personal level? What's your one motivating, aside from wanting to save humanity and well, I wanted to prove the prophecies wrong because it's so grim, and I'm a per I care about myself, my family, my neighbors, about humankind and the earth. I mean, I'm 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 no big guru or saint or something. I just care. There's lots of people that care, and they try to do. A lot of people in the environmental movement who are very misguided, unfortunately, because they don't know the facts about this. Billy Meyer is the first person to verifiably publish warning information about unnatural man-made climate change, global warming, ozone damage, the, the increase in frequency and intensity of all forms of environmental destruction, storms, earthquakes, sequel. it goes on and on. Climate change is legit. You're saying climate change, according to Billy, um, no, is it it, largely a concern? It's the, it's major. It's fundamental. We live on this planet and we've had nothing but people denying this because people want profit. We want to profit 
We don't want to think and get in touch with conscience and consciousness and responsibility to self and others. Of course, I was turned in, turned in to, to the environmental crisis in maybe something like 1962 or, or 50. I, I was in a bus. I was a teenager in Chicago. I'm watching the bus in front of me spew out diesel. And I said, gosh, the fossils are coming back to get us. Then I got involved in I worked with a couple of guys after I graduated from art school. We created a, an, an animated program with space heroes going to another planet to solve air pollution. Brought it to a big animation house in L.A. The guy said, wow, really great artwork. Wow, this is really great. But who cares about air pollution? Sorry. So I've been in it personally for a long time, written songs about it back in the. When was the when I know I heard one of them. It was great. When, when was the last time? You saw Billy in in person. Oh, uh, that was in May, and I was in touch with him on by email yesterday. Uh, we person, we confirmed... in person. When was the last time you you saw him? Like, in person was in May of last year. Of last year, did you ever? I mean, I would, and that's why I'm asking you because I I most certainly would have. I would have asked Billy to show me a Polaran ship, or take... I've seen him. I've so, seen. Within 20 feet, a small monitoring craft, and that was in 2011 in the mountains of Brazil. And 2004 or five, I had two sightings overhead on two consecutive days of the same craft coming above my head, high in the sky. It, was, it wasn't discernible like the one that was 20 feet away from me, but it did these angular movements that are impossible. And I've had four or five other sightings. It doesn't matter. I, I was interested in UFO stuff since I was a kid, but it's interesting, but it's not important. We can't do anything except get this conversation going and theorize about it. We, we're not going to make it. This Our world doesn't, for the longest time, if ever, truly make it into space. We're too warlike. We're, we're in the, on the eve of such levels of destruction here that it'll be survival for the survivors who are going to really, you know, be hating their ancestors, of which we will be part, for the destruction that we allowed to take place because greedy, maniacal, power-hungry people, many of whom died in their bunkers when earthquakes erupted unexpectedly and they were all in there thinking they were avoiding the cataclysms and other things take place. So, you know, there's a real world out there. Now, let's just say that I come off as somebody, oh, this guy's all over the place. And he's all, well, you know, hi, I'm a UFO contactee. Those are the idiots a lot of people are going to listen to. Wow, he's a UFO contactee. I'm not a contactee. I'm a connectee. I make a connection between the true contactee and those people who want to know about it. I'm just one of the people who wanted to be more effective. And I've, you know, I do this with, with the the assistance of people like you, because the Tucker Carlson's, they may never even know, get this information. And if they do, will they censor it? Are there, there are people that have censored it. There was a guy named Larry King. I get that. It just goes on and on. So if I'm vocal and animated and irritated and agitated, it's because I keep seeing these things manifest. Those seven foot giants, there's stuff that's happened since then. We get tired of corroborating. I just found a corroboration by accident mm -hmm. of information that I verifiably put online, 1998 or 99, where Meyer was asking what the temperature is that prions, those little things that are responsible for mad cow disease, mm -hmm. what are the requisite temperatures for destroying prions. And I had, at the time I wrote the article, I couldn't find anything. There was no info. And I just happened to see that again. And I thought, gee, I wonder if, and I went and I did a search and it was only in, I think, in the last 10 years or 15 years that they came up with the temperature. And you know what it is? It's exactly to the degree what Meyer verifiably published. And I repeated the publishing in a magazine. Do you think most people are going to care that this man is this accurate? And when he tells them, your country will be wrecked, have a nice day, that they're going to do anything except argue about whether... Uh, Trump is this and, and QAnon and Biden and Kennedy. This is this goes nowhere, people. But it's the game. You're going to play it. More power to you. Enjoy Talk yourself. To, 
along with the prophecies, let's talk about one possible solution to one of the prophecies. Like what does Billy recommend say? What do the Polarans say? Or, there's got to be a way to fix things because knowing about it is great, but what's the solution? Pick one and we'll see if I have an answer for you. Which Okay, is- the one I want to talk about, we really need to be careful about. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so let's just say pandemics, okay? Well, sure. Well, as early as 1947, when he was 10 years old, young now known as Billy, Edward Albert Meyer, wrote extensive information about a coming disease Mm -hmm. that was going to be very virulent, would first appear as a lung disease that would come out of Guangdong, China. When was this right here? When? What year did Billy make this prediction? 1947. He's 10 years old. How do you think he possibly could have known that and all the details in that article? Remember, I did say this man and this boy, who was when he was born, time traveler. Okay, don't have to believe that, folks. But if you have a better explanation, that's fine. And if you don't care to explain it, that's okay, too. But how did this young person project that and then talk about something coming subsequent to that that would also come out of a lab as an accidental release, a lab in China, again, accidental release, and that it would have its genesis in the alliance of two powerful people, one of whom would have been a leader of China and the other a disgraced and humiliated prominent leader of America who would get together and take some existing material and start working on the engineering of it to make it extremely virulent, which they, they, these two people, set it in motion. The Chinese guy is a guy named Mao Zedong. For, so just in case there's any people who don't want to hear the name of this president, I am not a crook, I am not a crook, um, you can look it up on my blog. And he published again in 1949 about damages to... Um, women's uh, who you know the fetuses or ability to give birth lots of things that he said that a certain medication was going to create great problems in that regard and these warnings about epidemics and pandemics actually go back thousands of years about these times foretelling these times and the term they used and it's all all there on my site yeah rampantly spreading diseases mm. and i have a i have a blog where you see these different years and in the Meyer material they're talking about a rampantly spreading disease it means a dangerous like an epidemic right. we are going to have more flus there's there's bird flu there's stuff coming and while um you know people may not like people like Fauci or, or Gates, and they may have good reason. Like they didn't create the current pandemic. Whatever has been done subsequently, nowadays, it's silly to you know censor people. They took down my YouTube channel because I talked about this. Now you're seeing there are people in in government committees starting to talk about what about these you know side effects. We'll leave it alone. The answer to your question is we are forewarned. That means that those legitimate medical scientists who can work and develop, see, not all vaccines are bad. Some of them really work real well and did help to set aside, you know, some pretty bad diseases. Some diseases have been at least eliminated, but some are going to be reappearing. This is part of the warning. Too, that as the glaciers melt, you know, with global warming, that a lot of this bacteria becomes... Uh, alive as it was inert, you know, at, at one point. So who who knows? I, all I, all, all I know too here. is that the censorship of our voices is is probably for me one of the um, it gets it gets under my craw probably the most because like I remember years ago you could have a debate with someone about anything and it it was exactly that just a mm-hmm. conversation. Just a debate. Mm-hmm. And the silencing of our voices is just not, 
it's not good. <laughs> Obviously, it's- people are putting up with it. You know, I, I did my own little show online, and I have a song that I wrote. I think it was at the end of the eighties. I wrote this song. It is the time of avaricious men lost in their lust for power, baby. Here they come again. They wave the flag to distract us from the truth while they lie like hell and blah, blah, blah. The the thieves are on the loose. Don't go along with that in the land of the free. That's the way they take away our liberty. Don't go along with that in the land of the free. That's the way they take away our liberty. Billy Meyer in 58 wrote about the biochipping that would take place. Oh, this was in the same, in 1950, same article where he's foretelling the internet connection around the world before we have computers and also deep fakes. He's describing, he's saying people will be fooled by the creation of things visually. They're, the eye will be fooled in, and they will no longer be able to discern reality. 1958, he warns about AI in 1987. But people want to listen to David Grush sitting there talking about, uh, yeah, we've got the alien bodies. Oh, okay. Go over there, have some more Kool-Aid, and let the grown-ups come forward with the real thing. If your government doesn't object too much to the truth being told yeah. while you conduct all your wars. So so all these abductees that have come out yeah. saying yeah. they're cuckoo, they're, it never really happens because they, they, it's so... Some of them are so convincing. Of course, a lot of people, here's what we can say. Number one, not one so-called abductee has ever come forward with evidence that proves it. Now, they can say, oh, well, you know, this, that, they took it away, they scooped my skin. The abduction and mutilation phenomenon, as Meyer explained decades ago, is primarily done by secret military. I have a a, a video online on my site of a guy I met who was an army ranger and then involved in secret weapons development. He explained how they would do so fake, you know, abduction things with going into homes, pumping gas into a home where people are asleep at night, you know, some remote place, and then implanting memories. Look. The government, the intelligence programs where they do mind control on people, those are realistic. There is hypnosis, there's drugs. They can condition people to believe that they've had all sorts of experiences. We have articles all on my site that are explaining that technology, how the Nazis were developing and using that technology. Mind control. Hmm? What about Barney and Betty Hill? They had an experience that at first Meyer was told he thought it. The play Aaron thought it might have been a real one. And then they did further examination. They said they hit a place with extremely strong geomagnetic forces and they came up with this themselves. I frankly, I don't I don't like that. I don't think that's the right explanation. I, I can disagree with the stuff in the Meyer case. I don't know. It's just I don't think so, because it seems like she was describing that star map. There are people who have been stopped by craft either secret military or Nazi craft going back a little ways or extra, you know, extraterrestrial craft. These things have happened, but this whole thing, I'm an abductee. None of these people can prove anything. And, and with the proliferation of all this idiocy about UFOs and abductions and contactees, people who, you know, they the, you get a lot of people believe the earth is flat. You got a lot of people who absorb this stuff and they go to sleep and they, this is pumped into them subconsciously as well. They wake up thinking they're abductees. Good night. Here you go again. And all they have to do is have been exposed to other gibberish and they can come forward and tell the same story. I got a friend who uh, thinks he's in contact with some gods that he thinks created the earth and he channels them, right? Oh, I've I know seen so much of that. No. I I have disagreed. I was trying to explain to this guy, you're delusional. And then on a couple of occasions, I sat in front of him and I channeled from him right in front of him. We are the Space Brothers. Come to you in a mission of love and light to show that you, you are gods in your own time, marching upon the earth in this time and space. The reality that you create. I mean, anybody can do that nonsense. And if you watch enough of it, and I in the 80s, I went to a lot of those to try and see if anybody knew anything. Not a one of them. Nothing. Zero. You could. Take so, a cup. You know, when you go to those the shows where the psychics uh, pick member audiences and they go, oh, I'm hearing the name Betty, you know, and she she has a message for you like that kind of thing. So, yeah, 
you left the the, the burners on at home. Right. So, you know, it, well, look, it, this is the goofy time where people, yeah. the media, infiltrated and controlled it as, as it is by intelligence operatives, which love this UFO community. You get people like Tom DeLong, the rock and roller who was brought in. He thought he was being let in on the secrets of the universe by Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon. Ooh, and then they they joined forces for this thing to the stars or towards the stars academy. And yeah. Tom DeLong is just, you know, gooey over all this. Then Lou and Chris Mellon moved on. They used that. Then they come forward with their thing to now start the next thing because they got the attention of a large number of millennials or millennial mush-minded people and others. And so they come forward to help promote the evil alien threat agenda, raise more money for war and whatever. You know, thing. And off and running, they have all the resources in the world. They shut us out because they promote any of these, you know, lame brains that want to get on there and promote the the agenda and and carry on about UFOs, UAP. They changed the name UAP, unidentified aerial phenomena. Oh well, we've identified. We know what these things are. They're, you know, these are actual identified flying objects from a man in Switzerland. But you folks don't want the rest of the country or the world to know about it because it's going to ruin your crazy ass agenda to blow everything up. Yeah, and of course they're going to change it again to uh, anonym, uh, anomalous. For, it's like what these words that these they think it's I don't know going to make a difference in in it it make does it believe it, no. it makes a difference because it gets people out of thinking into yeah. phenomenon right and phenomena. I yes. got to ask you before we go. Sure. I'm I'm going to be talking to someone about. Um, Actually, very shortly, uh, a, a second Roswell crash that that took place. D let's just talk about Roswell for for. for just it was real. Down. It was real. It was real, and those. That's why when, when Grush is talking about and people are not talking about non-human intelligences, these were androids, you dummies, you dummies. These are androids. How sophisticated little gray men. Yeah, and they don't exist anymore. The Greys, those androids have long since died. Some were killed in crash or crashes. Some died in captivity. There were other crashes. There may have been eight or nine crashes, at least around the world. And the the extraterrestrials that sent those craft for observation, they weren't in the craft. They make robotic androids. Look at where we are in the development of androids. Of course, our big fascination right now it's between two things. One, it's making sure you can have something to flip burgers and replace everybody. And then sex dolls. So, you know, great. They're playing and preying on the mentality of the, you know, average American consumer. And of course, robots, this is inevitable. But the AI element that is being brought into things, it is going to, with 100% certainty, if Meyer's right again from 87, turn against us and be hunting human beings and killing him. So while you're also fascinated with AI and how convenient it is to go on and do all this stuff, there's a destiny awaiting that's not going to be so pleasurable, not so delightful. And maybe some people want to just start thinking now and getting their voices heard and not just going along with the herd that was given information, but never heard it. What can you do? I do other things that I enjoy, like walking, being in the woods and stuff. But try to get this out anyhow, because there's lots of young people. There's lots of people coming into this world now, too. And many that are here that are also connected, as some of us are, through previous lifetimes to this material, to being from other places but it's not a special thing it doesn't matter where you're from we're in a universe and there's different planets and some people died here in the previous exist existence and they reincarnate here and it's always up to them their choice as to what they're going to do what we're going to do with any lifetime wherever we may think or believe about reincarnate it doesn't matter i mean there's great information meyer's books are so mind-blowing that if people wanted to learn to think and read and study 
please go to the blog and get a book. Get a book called The Might of the Thoughts. You'll learn how to think and you won't be a patsy for the intelligence services and this idiotic UFO UAP stuff that is just. Is that the book you recommend folks start with first? I would. The Might of the Thoughts. It's on our shop linked to from our blog. We've got a website. It's brilliant. If you had one book that you would live with for the next 40, 50, 60 years, you get that book. You will reread that book and reread that book because this man writes in a way that you are not familiar with. It's clear. It makes you think and you can't just rush through it. It's not just use a bunch of big fancy words. He explains things. Then you have to find out if it's true. How do you do it? You apply the recommendations, the lessons, if you will, that are expressed, not beliefs. You don't gather this up as a belief system. It's pointless. It's not a belief system. Thinking. So we even have a monthly meeting that's held internationally online once a month. There's a peace meditation done a couple of times a month. These things are open. They're free. And all uh, 2,000 articles on my blog, another couple hundred on the website, it's all free. All the evidence, the research, free. You don't have to buy into this nonsense and buy books by Harvard professors who don't know their ass from their elbow. Pardon me. If Avi Loeb or anybody else would like to attempt to discredit me, I can feed him the truth uh, directly or intravenously, or he can take it home and Anyway, what can you do except, you know, put it out there and just be a curmudgeon or what have you? Yeah. If people don't want to think. That's okay. We do our best. I'm the, I'm learning. I'm a student of this. I'll be a student for a long time to come, hopefully, here. And whatever is next time personality, Earth will only really come to reason and evolve and into safety when this teaching, this creation energy, comma, spiritual, if you will, teaching, is studied and people start discussing and studying and applying, no beliefs, nobody punishing you if you don't do it, or if you do do it, you make your own mistakes, you learn from them. And then you realize, wow, I've been enriched by that. So, yes, we have, a, you know, I mean, somebody wants to say, I saw your... You know, you're, you're ranting and raving on Caroline's show, but I want to get that book. And I'll say, OK, let me know when you get the book. I'll, I'll download you a free film, an award winning film on the Meyer case, better than any UFO films out there easily, because it's got the real thing and the real person in them, Billy Meyer. So if you hear that, if you heard that one of an off free offer, take me up on it. Why not? So I thank you very much for your time. And, you know, it's just one of those days where, can't any longer just not allow myself to go a little nuts in the face of, you know, getting a chance to put it out in the world. But I, I don't, I don't know. It's just the best I could do. No, this was great, Michael. Thank you so much. I always thoroughly enjoy discovering new information with you and sharing it with folks that, you know, maybe it'll mean something to some of them. That's all we can hope for. Um, and um, I hope we get to do this again, too. Again and again, as long as you're ready, willing, and able. And I probably will. I mean, it's it a whole world for me. So, Well, thank you. And and as soon as you have it available, you let me know. You send me a link, and we promote it to our international audience as well. Awesome. I'll be in touch, of course. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. And I thank your audience, because I know that the people who come to your show they, may, they don't have to agree with me, but they do a little more reason and thinking and questioning, and that's what Some I appreciate. Some comments are, are great, and I'm sorry to folks if I didn't get to them all. Just shoot me an email, and I'll make sure to ask Michael next time we speak. Do it again. Thank you, Thank Michael. You. Be in touch. My pleasure. Have a good Bye. one. Bye-bye.